race and Johnny Dumfries takes the lead as they go into the first right-hander at Cops Corner, which is a fourth gear bend. Behind him, Gilbert Scott, Russell Spence goes through, Alan Bird closes up, and draw, coming up the rear, Roxy Lott, the girl from America, driving in her first Formula 3 race, and what a day she has chosen to do it. And as they come out of the left-hander, coming down towards the hangar street, it is Dumfries leading, it's Berg second, it's Russell Spence in fourth position. And now they stream round the left-hander at Chapel, come down the hangar street. I'm glad to say that it looks as though this snow shower is easing up just a fraction, but it's still pretty heavy here at the start, albeit not so bad as they come down to Stowe Corner on lap one, and it's Dumfries leading, or is it Berg's going to try and take him on the inside? And he does it. Alan Berg, the Canadian in the Eddie Jordan Rolt, takes the lead, but Dumfries has retaken it, and it looks to me as though somebody was off temporarily at Stowe Corner. But now there's a real battle developing because in second position, it's Andrew Gilbert Scott in the Murray Taylor Rolt. Now, that is definitely a man to watch. He's got the Racing for Britain money behind him. That's money that has been raised by British enthusiasts all over the country. And according to their votes, Andrew Gilbert Scott was given the money last night, and that's going to help him enormously in his Formula 3 career. Martin and... Gilbert Scott takes the lead at the chicane from Dumfries. In third position behind Dumfries is Paul Oyser, the Dutch driver in the Magnum, who has just lost it to Allen Berg. And we go into the second full lap now with Andrew Gilbert Scott leading. And the driver has spun off right here at the start and finish point. And it, it's... Brian Dunning has spun off, and so has Mike Blanche as the leaders go on to their second lap. And Tiffany Dell, what's it like driving in these sort of conditions? Well, Murray, we've got amazing conditions. We saw Alan Berg take the lead at Stowe, then drop to third two corners later. The conditions are variable from corner to corner. The woodcut chicane uh, just at the start finish line is very, very greasy from the snow flurry. The Stowe's stopped, but at the moment, uh, it's amazing. And They're look at this, coming, coming, that's Mike Blanche spinning out at the end of the first lap, number 53 from Jersey and Huntington, Mike Blanche, the Lola sales manager, Brian Dunning has gone off as well, just a few yards further up the track from Mike Blanche. And uh, look at them, all round the circuit, and going off there is Ross Cheever, that's Eddie Cheever's brother, Eddie Cheever, the Alfa Romeo 1984 Grand Prix driver, and Ross has rejoined the circuit in a slightly unconventional way, but never mind, he's back. The car looks as though it is whole, and we are now coming up to the end of lap two in this 20-lap race, and Andrew Gilbert Scott is building up a magnificent lead in only his third Formula, his fourth Formula 3 race. He now leads Johnny Dumfries by 2.37 seconds. And in third position behind Dumfries, it's the Dutchman, Cor Oyser, in the only Magnum car in the race. In fourth position, it's Canadian Alan Berg. In fifth place, behind Alan Berg, it's the Spanish driver, Carlos Abella, in the Rolt, and then in sixth position, it's Russell Spence in the Glen Waters car. And there's the battle for the lead. Now we're going round the right-hander there at Beckett's. From Beckett's down towards Chapel. From there's Carlos Abella who's gone off. There's Russell Spence, and, and they're spinning all round the circuit. Coming down the hangar straight now. This is a speed down the hangar straight of some 100 35 miles an hour, even in today's conditions. And the race looks as though it's getting a bit simple. There's Andrew Gilbert Scott, number three, in the lead. Behind him, it's Cor Oyser now in second place. Oyser in the Magnum has moved up into second place ahead of Johnny Dumfries, who is in third position. And there's a big midfield battle going on. Well, Andrew Gilbert Scott, very much the man of the race. Look at him. There he is, 25 years old, comes from Cookham Dean, three times Formula Ford champion, won the Formula Ford Festival last year, went to Formula 3 at Thruxton, finished second in his first Formula 3 race, and this year has shown tremendous form, and he celebrated his racing for Britain sponsorship yesterday by getting the first Formula 3 pole position in his short career. And there's a, there's a real slide there. Oyster and Dump 
Reese fighting for second position. But Andrew Gilbert Scott is really showing who is the top man at the present moment. Now there is Oyser, Dumfries, Allenberg in second, third and fourth places. A win already, do you think, Tiff, for Andrew Gilbert Scott here? Well, certainly, Murray, he's made the best of the conditions. He's driven brilliantly as he's opening laps. He wasn't pestered by other people diving inside him when he's made the break. But uh, Coy Oyser, who's uh, three seconds behind, he's come from ninth position on the grid uh, in the Magnum car. And there he is. There is Cor Oyser, ex-Formula Ford 2000 and ex-Formula Ford 1600 champion of Europe. He comes from Oss in Holland. That's the man in the white car, number seven in second place behind the leader here. Now there is Oyser. Behind him in the silver and yellow Rolt is Johnny Dumfries, who is certainly the man of Formula 3 of 1984 so far, having won at Silverstone and Thruxton. And last weekend, he won the first European Championship round at Donington. And now, Gilbert Scott crosses the line to complete another lap with Oyser second. The gap between Gilbert Scott and Oyser is 3.48 seconds. They are on lap five. There is Oyser. It's a very distinctive, beautifully finished John Robinson built Magnum with its unique rear suspension which allows maximum ground effects because these Formula 3 cars are still allowed ground effects unlike the Grand Prix cars. Now there is Oyser, 26 years old, a very, very determined character and he's driving a full season of British Marlborough Formula 3 Championship races here and judging from the way he is going could be a real threat to Johnny Dumfries, the championship leader. Jump, Dumfries is leading the championship with 19 points after two championship races. That's uh, two nine scores plus one for fastest lap because there's an extra point there. So there goes the race leader, Andrew Gilbert Scott. Shortish, tousled head, extremely likeable young man, very cheerful. But he's got plenty to be cheerful about so far. Pole position for this race and uh, making the rest look like a lot of also rounds at the moment as he comes into the chicane at Woodcote in fourth gear, takes it at about 115 miles an hour, accelerates away. Now, I wonder what the gap between himself and Oyser is now. The answer is 4.1 seconds. So number three, Gilbert Scott, is pulling away in the Murray-Taylor route from number seven, Cole Oyser in second position, who's got Johnny Dumfries just behind him, who's got Alan Berg just behind him. And now, Gilbert Scott laps Roxy Lott, who comes from Speedway, India, overlooking the Indianapolis circuit and this is her first Formula 3 race there she is in the pink Rolt car about to be swept past by Cor Oyser by Dumfries, by Berg, by Abella there she's gone off Abella is now having a real scrap and what about that then? I don't think Roxy's going to like it a lot here at Silverstone she's out of the race and uh, nasty experience for her now. I wonder if she's going to try and restart. Meantime, there's Gilbert Scott. Oyser. The interesting thing to me, Tim, is that this Magnum car is unique in this race and it seems to be going extremely well in second position. Yes, Murray, I thought that the, the Rolt cars are obviously best suited to the perfect conditions. The Magnum's going quicker and quicker and Coy Oyster really made the most of the very greasy conditions using his driving skill to get to second place. I had expected him to drop back down through these routes chasing him much quicker than he has done, but in fact he's, he's staying ahead of Dumfries, so Dumfries now beginning to get everything together. He needs to get past Oyser soon and chase Gilbert Scott. The gap has come down slightly to 3.9 seconds between Gilbert Scott and Oyser who, as Tiffany Dell has just said, has got, and you can see for yourselves, Johnny Dumfries in third position behind him. Dumfries, uh, like Andrew Gilbert Scott, has come up with a rush in 1984. He lives in London. He makes his living motor racing. He's been in it four years. And like so many of today's drivers, he started in carts, went on to Formula Ford 1600, then to Formula 3. Now he's got uh, the right sort of sponsorship because to need to drive a good Formula 3 car with a chance of success these days, you need at least £100,000 for a full season. Incredible but true. Gilbert Scott leads. 
Oyser second, Dumfries third, Berg in the blue car is in fourth position. Behind Alan Berg is Russell Spence, last year's Formula Ford 2000 uh, champion, who has just passed the Spaniard Carlos Cabela. The leader. Down, down one gear into Woodcote. Flick it right, left, right at some 115 miles an hour. And there's a tremendous end. Very, very close. Johnny Dumfries is challenging for second. There you are. He came right up to Cor Oyser as they went into the chicane. And Alan Berg is right behind in third position. And Russell Spence is closing up. Now you see the second, third, fourth and fifth men very close to each other indeed. Second, Oyser in the Magnum. Third, Dumfries in the Raw. Fourth, Berg in the Raw. There is the leader, Andrew Gilbert Scott, now on lap eight out of 20. Here is the battle for second, third, fourth positions. That's Dumfries, number one. Behind him, the diminutive Canadian Alan Berg has gone on the grass and spun it, and he goes spinning, pirouetting round and magnificently holds it. That's a job, trip to hold that. Yes, Murray, there he was trying to go through that Beckett's corner, the last corner before the straight, to get out of that corner as fast as possible to try and get a toe to Dumfries down the straight, but it went wide and uh, did a very nice 360 loop the loop off the grass onto the track, but he's lost three or four places and really lost all chance of winning the race. Yeah, and lost his race rhythm too, of course, in the process. He was passed at least uh, temporarily by Carlos Abella, and uh, I expect to see now a battle between Berg and Abella. Yes, now Dumfries perfectly set coming up to the chicane, Murray. He went through that club corner on the screen now faster than uh, the noiser, and now he's coming under the express bridge side by side. Gilbert Scott goes through now. Who's going to be second into the chicane? The answer is Cor Oyser. Jo Johnny Dumfries tried but failed, as he did the previous lap. And the gap between the race leader and this terrific scrap now between three men for second place as they go into Cox is 4.26 seconds. And number four, Russell Spence, goes up into third position past Johnny Dumfries. Dumfries was in a dilemma then. He had the problem of, first of all, trying to get past Oyster and gain second place, and at the same time, stop Russell Spence from getting past him when he failed on both counts. He didn't take Oyster for second. He did keep Spence back, and Spence has spun it now. I suspect, Tim, that this surface is a lot damper than it looks. Yes, again, it's, it's still greasy, obviously. It's catching these people out. Again, Russell Spence, that's the right hand run to the straight. He was trying to go as quick as possible to get away from Dumfries, get right in the slipstream of Cor Oyster to get past Oyster. Here we see him trying to go through really quickly, really neatly, trying to get onto that straight as fast as he could. But he just tried that a little bit too quick. The tail's broken away, and he goes into a 360 spin. So now Dumfries has to make up the gap again. And Dumfries now, although he won't know it, has the challenge of possibly winning this race because we have just been told that Andrew Gilbert Scott, that you look at across the circuit now as he comes into Woodcote Corner for the ninth time, has been given a one minute, a 60 second penalty for a false start. Now, at the moment, as they complete the lap, Gilbert Scott is leading Oyster by four seconds, so there is no way that number three, racing for Britain, Andrew Gilbert Scott, is going to win this race because he's got to pull away at least another 57 seconds in the just over half distance of the race that is left to him, and he's not going to do that because Oyster is hanging on just four seconds behind him, and you can see that there's a change now because in third position is Carlos Abella, the Spanish driver who is driving the Dick Bennett's car, and Dick Bennett's is the man that brought on Jonathan Palmer to his uh, British Formula 3 championship success. And now, there is Oyser in the white car. Behind Oyser now is Dumfries. He's and gone, Murray. Spin, spin, spin again. And that's Oyser out, rear wing broken, even if the and I suspect the rear suspension. Down goes the cat spencing, another perfect example of what a superb safety measure the poles and wire netting, which are called catch fencing, are because they do exactly what their name suggests. They stop the car from sliding into the Arco. Let's look at it again as Cor Oyser, who was in second position, loses the Magnum, coming out at Stowe with smoke coming up from his rear tyres as they scrub off the speed. He goes back right the way round, loses the front, of course, on the grass, can't 
catch the car and straight into the catch fencing and out of round three of the Marlborough Formula 3 Championship here at Silverstone today. Well, that means that Dumfries is now in a very commanding position to win the race. You look at the man who is leading on the track, Andrew Gilbert Scott, who is now on his 11th lap out of 20. But certainly far less than 60 seconds behind him is Johnny Dumfries now in second position. There he is, number one, because he's leading the championship with 19 points after two rounds, one on the short circuit at Silverstone. And the second Truxton, Johnny Dumfries, the coming man. He certainly arrived in Formula 3, and he sees ahead of him Andrew Gilbert Scott. I, do you imagine, Tiff, that uh, Dave Price, who is looking after Johnny Dumfries, will give him a signal about Andrew Gilbert Scott's penalty? I'm sure, yes, Murray. David Price, who runs this team so efficiently, uh, he's going to be well on top of this. He'll uh, be looking forward to his fourth win in succession. Unbeaten, of course, here this year, Johnny Dumfries. And uh, being a Scot, he's already won the Triple Crown. He's now going for the Grand Slam of four out of four. There goes Gilbert Scott through. There is Dumfries. The gap is only 3.8 seconds. So quite apart from the penalty, number one, Dumfries with Carlos Abella in the background in third position in his first drive for Dick Bennett. Dumfries is actually catching Andrew Gilbert Scott, who will, of course, Andrew, be bitterly disappointed after his pole position. He told me he wanted so much to win this race to give thanks to all the people who had contributed to his drive through the Racing for Britain organisation and he's going to be denied that pleasure because now on lap 12, 20 lap race with Roxy Locks, Pink Rolf parked by the side of the hangar straight, Andrew Gilbert Scott leads, here is the second man but leading the actual race because of Gilbert Scott's penalty and that is Johnny Dumfries. 24 years old, first at Silverstone, first at Thruxton, first in the European Donington round, and that was a very considerable achievement because he was up against the best drivers, not just from Britain, but from Europe as well. Gilbert Scott. Now, in the third car in the background behind this one, Johnny Dumfries, is Carlos Abella. And Abella has now got, it looks like, uh, Berg behind him. It, it's Gary Evans. Now, this is equally interesting because Gary Evans, who is driving for Dick Bennett's, and that's number 12 when you see the car in the picture. There is Carlos Abella. Now there behind him is his teammate, Gary Evans, who is 23 years old and comes from Oakwood in North London. And this is only his first season of Formula 3. He's driving for that very seasoned manager, the New Zealander Dick Bennett's, and uh, he's bidding fair to get third position from Carlos Abella as they go through on their 13th lap out of 20. There's Abella in the distinctive blue and white car. There is Gary Evans in the second Dick Bennett's car in fourth position now. And behind him is Russell Spence. There is Spence, number four, in the background, who comes from Bradford, drives the Glen Waters car. And so you see now the third, fourth and fifth cars because behind the blue and white number 12 brought of young Gary Evans is Russell Spence. That's the leader. Here is the actual race leader on time, Johnny Dumfries. There he was. Now there's Abella, third. Evans, fourth. Russell Spence there in fifth position. And behind Russell Spence in sixth position is Paul Redisich, another new name in Formula 3. He's come from New Zealand and like Gilbert Scott, has been sponsored by his enthusiasts in his homeland, and he is racing for New Zealand. And Raddy Seach is in sixth position, having taken pole position at Thruxton in only his second Formula 3 race in Britain. That's Gilbert Scott. Now, the second of these two cars is Dumfries going on the inside there of Reimer Soderman, the finish driver, getting in three races before he returns to Finland. Alan Berg is starting to move up now. Look for number two, the blue, white and red car, who is into ninth position, Alan Berg. As there he is, the last of these cars. And he's chasing Calvin Fish, who last year drove the BT Formula 3 Dave Price car. There's David Hunt in the green and white car. 
And this man, Alan Berg, is in second place in the Formula 3 Championship of 1984, having finished second to Johnny Dumfries of both Silverstone and Truxton, spun off earlier on, having had trouble on the warm-up lap and is now attempting to get through the field up into at least sixth position to get championship points. Yes, Murray, it's the, it's the battle really for third on the road and second in the actual race after the minute penalty for Gilbert Stock that's hotting up. There we see Spence in the shot now, who's already caught right up with Gary Evans. Evans is catching his teammate Abella, and it's Spence after that unfortunate spin when he threw away second place, who's really uh, got the bit between his teeth, and he's after getting second place back again. Number 11 is Abella. Number 11, Abella, is in second place in the race because I am now going to discount altogether, and I'm sorry to have to do it, Andrew Gilbert Scott, who although he is leading on the track, there he goes, is in fact well down because number one, appropriately enough, is number one in the race is Dumfries. There is Abella, second, Evans, third, Spence in fourth position, number four. So number one leads, number four is four and they are separated by numbers 11 and 12 as they come down the hangar straight. Three rolls, leading the Spaniard, Carlos Abella. And Abella, 25 years old, comes from Valencia, ex-car driver, ex-Formula Ford driver, second position, first race for Dick Bennett's. He will be very, very happy indeed because he's had quite a long layoff. He'll be happy provided he can keep number 12, Gary Evans, and number four, the very determined Bradford man, Russell Spence, away. They're taking the corner very, very wide there as they come into Abbey. They go over the ridge bars, and Russell Spence is going to try and take Gary Evans as they come up to Woodcote. Yes, Spence perfectly situated. Evans has given him the outside line. Evans is going to stick to the inside, and he's holding him off. Spence lunges down the outside. He'll never get through, but he does. And the gap now between Johnny Dumfries, the leader, and uh, Carlos Abella, who is in second place, is only four seconds. Abella fighting to keep now Russell Spence away. Russell Spence and Abella pulling away from Gary Evans. Well, Murray, the way, the way Russell Spence went past Gary Evans, I don't think Abella's got much chance. That was a very, very brave manoeuvre down the outside. And uh, it'll be interesting, in fact, to put the gap between Dumfries and uh, Spence when Spence gets past Abella, as I'm sure he will. And they have got uh, five laps, including the one they're on now, to reverse the positions as far as Russell Spence, Carlos Abella and Johnny Dumfries, the Formula 3 race leader, is concerned. As you see... Andrew Gilbert Scott leading on the track, but not in the race because of that 60-second penalty for a full start. So Johnny Dumfries is the leader in his Rolt VW-powered car. The engine looked after by John Judd, and now this is Spence's chance. They're coming up to Abbey. He's even closer. Look, his front wing is tucked right under the gearbox of Abella's Rolt and Spence is going to choose his moment, come out of the slipstream of Carlos Abella and go through on the inside, or is he? The leader is through, it's Abella, number 11, second, Russell Spence, number four, third, and nearly losing it. Behind them, still in fourth position, number 12, Gary Evans, they go on to lap 17 now, and his 20-lap race, Johnny Dumfries still leads on his way to his fourth Formula 3 victory in the four Formula 3 races that he has driven this year. Dumfries was in Formula 3 last year, but uh, he didn't have the backing or the machinery that he's got in this race, and he's showing a great deal of class and talent. And although it's early days, we can hopefully say that we've got yet another Formula 1 driver like Martin Brundle and Jonathan Palmer emerging from the ranks of Formula 3 drivers in the future. There he is, Johnny Dumfries, from Scotland and London. And he's now, you can see, as I said earlier on, he's definitely catching Gilbert Scott. So, and I don't think for one moment that Andrew Gilbert Scott will be slowing up because he's been told he's got a penalty. No, Murray, he wants to win this race on the road. He'd be cross about the mistake. Here we have Spence coming up. He, he rather overdid it. He was trying too hard the last time through the chicane. He lost ground. He's now catching back up to Abella again. Spence, of course, having the Volkswagen engine, as does Dumfries.
whereas Gilbert Scott of Bella and Evans is Toyota powered. So an interesting aspect of Formula 3 at the moment. And the gap between Andrew Gilbert Scott as we look at Abella, Spence and Evans going through the chicane. The gap between Gilbert Scott and Dumfries is down to 2.8 seconds. So Johnny Dumfries is definitely catching the man who's leading on the track, albeit with a 60 second penalty. And there he is, Andrew Gilbert Scott behind him, Johnny Dumfries, second on the track, leading the race. Very smooth. And absolutely calm and phlegmatic about his racing. No illusions, he knows what his strengths and weaknesses are. He's, he's developing the former and trying to overcome the latter. And fortunately, they all decided to stay on slick tyres because just before this race began, there was a very, very heavy snowstorm and there was a lot of consideration about whether to go on to wet tyres. Well, that snowstorm, like two others that we've had here today, cleared very rapidly and left the course absolutely dry. Although earlier on we had some dampness which resulted in spinning off. So there is Dumfries, here are Abella and Spence fighting for that second position with Gary Evans in fourth place holding a watching brief. Behind Gary Evans in fifth and sixth places are Randy Seach and David Hunt. And are we going to have a change for second this time at Woodcote? I don't think Mr. Abella is going to help. And he, through he goes, Russell Spence has done it. Third time lucky, a great manoeuvre too. Absolutely beautiful, Barry. Abella had been doing the real blocking tactics. He'd moved from the inside to the outside. He, he left it as late as possible, Abella, to move to the outside. Really didn't expect Spence to do it, but Russell's uh, really charged up. A very good aggressive driving from Russell and uh, bodes well for his season ahead. Yeah, Russell, who works in the family building business, four years experience, a, a, a hill climb champion in 1980, then he moved on to Formula Ford 2000. Last year he dominated it in Britain and in Europe, won the Euro Euro European Championship for Formula Ford 2000 and the prestigious Golden Lion Trophy. Drove his first Formula 3 race at uh, Brands Hatch at the tail end of last year. Went to Formula 3 full time this year and is managed and looked after in terms of machinery by one of the best people in the business, Glenn Waters, the ex-chief mechanic for the Lotus Grand Prix team. And his organisation has produced a superb car for Russell Spence. And look at the gap now that Russell Spence has pulled out between himself and the previous second man, Carlos Abel. They're coming up to Woodcote, they being Dumfries in the lead. Russell Spence, there he is in second position, and then to start their last lap. And Murray, that fabulous charge of Russell Spence there going through the chicane has seen him break the lap record. We have a new lap record for Russell Spence of 25.5. Uh, That's a fifth of a second quicker than Tommy Burns' record. So Russell Spence to be the, the star of this race anyway. Indeed. And, uh, there is Gilbert Scott, there is Johnny Dumfries who is going to fail in his attempt not only to win the race on time but to win it on the track. There he is, because Andrew Gilbert Scott is going to finish the race in front of him only to learn to his bitter disappointment that he was penalised 60 seconds for a full start as they come down the hangar straight. Poor Andrew Gilbert Scott will be feeling absolutely delighted with himself with every justification actually as he comes up to Abbey for the last time chased by Dumfries they go round club corner the right-hander fifth gear absolutely flat out at some 130 miles an hour they stay in fifth accelerate to 135 140 miles an hour around Abbey curve in the background Russell Spence is actually closing up on Dumfries. Abella is just holding off Gary Evans. They are third and fourth. And still in fifth and sixth places, the New Zealander Paul Radisic and David Hunt. So Gilbert Scott waves a victory wave, but to no avail because he is way down and there was only 1.13 seconds between Johnny Dumfries and Russell Spence with that superb charge from the Bradford man in the closing stages of the race and a very very close finish for third place two and for fifth and sixth and subject to official confirmation then it's a win for the left-hand car of these two 
the driver, Johnny Dumfries. Ahead of him, Andrew Gilvan Scott in the Racing for Britain car. Dumfries realises he has won, of course, so he's had a signal. The snow is coming down again. Russell Spence will not be cooled by that because he's had a super second place in third position. And that's a great drive, too, from the Spaniard, Carlos Abella. In fourth place, an equally meritorious drive from Gary Evans. In fifth and sixth, New Zealander Paul Radisich and David Hunt. A very good round three of the Marlborough Formula 3 Championship of Britain of 1984.